Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Alberto Solano, who is the president and executive director of agros.org. And if you haven't heard of them before, they work with families in rural Latin America to move them out of poverty. And if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe, either on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to talk about how we can not only make poor families less, less poor, but actually move them out of poverty. So, Alberto, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. The contrary, Emil. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. So, how would you describe Agros to someone that is not familiar with your organization? We are an organization that breaks the cycle of rural poverty in Latin America. And we do that by doing a profound community transformation. We work, we understand that poverty is complex, that poverty is multidimensional. And therefore, there's not a single silver bullet to tackle it. We need to work in a holistic model that works in education, agriculture, health, basic household uh, services, and self-esteem so people can actually find their own path towards prosperity. I like that holistic approach. So you work with a whole community then? We actually build communities. We actually built communities from scratch. We have a very unique model that we've been refining over the last three, almost four decades. We're a cell-based nonprofit founded in 1984, when it was the heart of the civil, of the insurrection and civil wars in Central America. And we went to those countries back then to basically buy land. And by buying land, you're buying trouble. That was this the why this civil uh, conflict started because of the access to land. So we went back then and bought large tracts of land, invited the poorest families in the nearby neighborhoods or nearby areas. We invited them to the property. We helped them build houses, schools, clinics, roads, start an agricultural business, and over the eight to 10 years, pay back and be owners of that land. But it was not only a, only a land block. Now you have a thriving village that actually can move a family out of port. Wow, that's really interesting. So it's almost like a micro-loan kind of business model, but you do it for a whole community. That's what I was saying, that we do a profound community transformation. Uh, and, and by that, uh, it means that you have to take the long-term route. It's not a short-term solution. It's a solution, but it takes time. And we have to be willing to partner with the families from start to finish, knowing that it will take eight, 10 years to actually achieve the goal. But once you achieve the goal, Emil, it's a profound transformation. You have families who were displaced by the conflicts, who were land laborers, selling their effort to a big hacienda, a coffee, state farm, whatever. And now, eight years later, they not only own their land, they have a agriculture business, they have education, they have a house. And we like to say that in average, our families go from having nothing to accumulating fifteen to $25,000 of networks by the end of the, pro- of the cycle, of the program. Wow. And of course, that means that the second generation is in a much better condition than the parents ever been. That's incredible. So you're able to generate that kind of surplus. And you mentioned on your website the four key uh, factors, if you will, to break the cycle of poverty and start moving into this more prosperous future. Could you expand? Because I thought it were really interesting. You said land ownership, market-led agriculture, 
financial empowerment and health and well-being. I would love to hear your perspective on some or all of those uh, topics. Well, we, we start with land. And you have to understand that land for the family that we serve, it's more than an asset. It's really about their belongings. It's a culture tradition where they're rooted on. So it has a much profound meaning for them than just another asset. So we start with land because when you have farming families who are migrants, and these are not only, they're internal migrants. They move from the harvest to harvest. They follow the harvest. They go to the south with the sugarcane harvest. Then mid-year, they move to the north to follow the coffee harvest, etc. So they're always on the move. So they work when, with like big plantations and they have to go where, okay, yeah. Exactly. So imagine how disruptive that is for a family dynamic. When yeah. you have to be thinking about the next day where I'm going. And if I go there, will I find a job there? But it's not secure. You have to take on that trip, that journey, sometimes leaving your kids, leaving your wife, sometimes the whole family. And there's no assurance that you'll get a job. So we start by giving access to land because that is the first thing that they can really start to call home. And they stop worrying about what's next tomorrow. I'll have something to do for sure that is my own. The second thing is, you know, agriculture. Land and agriculture are totally interconnected. We help these families to uh, get on good agricultural practices. And not only best agricultural practices, but actually climate smart agricultural practices too. We help them connect with the markets. So their products and services and goods actually have a buyer. And we help in the brokerage to make sure that it's a fair uh, transaction. So these families over time start to move from basic staples, corn, uh, you know, uh, beans, to actually moving to produce vegetables for Walmart, for example. Uh, the, the economic empowerment aspect is really important because as your agriculture business starts to grow, then you start to actually face the, the reality that you have to separate between your household finances and your actual business finances. At the beginning, they're one and the same. Money is the scarce, uh, it's a scarce asset, so they're one and the same. As the business starts to grow, you have to separate those. Now you have to understand what working capital is, how interest rate, what is credit, and start to make a budget and plan. That's the financial empowerment. And we do it not only through financial education, we actually start with village and savings and loans associations, like village banks that help women to start their own business activities. And that brings another income uh, to the household. <clears throat> the third aspect is uh, health and well-being. And, you know, it's just important that we, to make this family move out of poverty, that they have access to basic services, clean water, other training, and all the conditions that make a family living dignified, you know? Uh, and we do the last one uh, with education, making sure that every family has access to education for at least nine years, which is important when you consider that in our countries, the average uh, family has three to four years of schooling. Mm. Yeah, I can really see how these four keys come together to form like a whole necessary holistic, holistic kind of thinking to move families out of poverty. So what are the effects then? Because I guess you're entering, you're doing this eight year or maybe more startup period. Are you guys withdrawing then and uh, moving on to the new community or and what is then happening in the community that you helped start up? You know, this model has been going on for almost 40 years. So as you can imagine there's been cycles of learning and reinventing as we go forward, no? To date, we have, uh, Launch, establish, and grant, launch and establish about 45 villages mm -hmm. uh, in Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Uh, right now, we have about seven to eight active villages uh, that are in the process of paying the land and becoming self sufficient. Our exit strategy happens two years before families start to, to are two years before the loans, the land loans are paid. And that moment, we focus on strengthening the, the community 
governance and making sure that the community governance is very, very strong so they can really, you know, plan what will be the next phase without any external involvement. That means building a community plan, a four or five year uh, strategic plan for the village. That means making sure that they are well connected to the market. So all the vendors and buyers that they've been developing relationships now start to transact with them. And that means that uh, Agros starts to work on a very planned basis. So all the responsibilities that we uh, have been taking are hand off to the village by itself. Mm. It's so interesting to see the development of a village uh, during these eight years, I see it in my mind at least. So the people that can live on this land, how do you pick them? And I'm asking because do these people know each other uh, before or are they strangers coming together and then building bonds as the community evolves? Yeah, yeah. And no community is the same, Emil, but yes, uh, the selection, the family selection process is one of the most important aspects for sure. Uh, because you're making a, a long-term commitment and this is not easy. This model is effective, it does work, but it demands an intensive amount of labor. You need to be able to be all in. So by selecting the families, it's our best you know, uh, opportunity to really make sure that this will work. Uh, we start by, uh, first of all, we well, it's a family commitment. So we just will talk to families when both men and women are present. We don't take applications for men or for women only. It's a family. Uh, it's a family commitment. It's a family plan. So we actually do separate interviews for each uh, man and woman. We do separate questions to make sure and coordinate the stories, and then we do a house visit to make sure that all the conditions and all the information that we received was accurate. Once that process is establish the families come to agros in a trial period that means that uh, instead of owning land and getting a contract to pay for the land they enter into a lease it's about an 18 months lease why a lease because then they will take a the first idea of what this looks like and if they don't they don't agree they don't like it it's not for them they can easily push move out without having any any strong attachments, no? So the lease is really a test period. For some families, it's 18 months. For some, it takes nine months because you see them that they're soaked into it because there's no reason to why to wait uh, on a lease and actually try to move into a land contract. Here. It must be so exciting, like building these communities. And uh, yeah, I can imagine the, how connected the uh, people who are living there come and really want to help bring each other out of poverty. So what are the challenges then that you are going through? Because there are so many different aspects you're trying to tackle at once. What is kind of the hardest part about getting this system up and rolling? One is one that you mentioned and I actually didn't uh, follow through, which is that these families don't know each other. And they were living by themselves pretty much, you know, of the group development grid by all means. And now you're coming with another 50, 30, 100 families that, are, that were in the same condition. Now they're living together. That's quite a change. It's a tremendous change. And it demands us to be able to respond to that change in a way that when you look into our uh, staff composition, yes, we have agronomists. Yes, we have financial service experts and microcredit. Uh, but we have nurses doctors, we have psychologists, uh, we have a whole variety of professions in order to tackle this holistic need. Because at the end of the day, you have to meet the families where they're coming, with their luggage, with their past, with their, you know, uh, difficulties, and you need to work with them, you know, through that recovery phase, we call, in order to get them then, later then, into a more productive phase. 
Uh, so that's a big challenge, how we earn that trust, how we equip ourselves with all these holistic skills that are necessary to help a family navigate through that family tissue, building back the family tissue of the recovery phase and get into a more productive phase. Yeah, it's, it's a huge social experiment. It's so interesting. And I guess you must be learning so much from this. So what kind of knowledge do you have that you wish other people or maybe other organization could learn from the work that you guys do in Agros? Emil, um, we've been learning by doing and we've been learning by making mistakes. It's, it's, it's a, it forces you to, to recheck your assumptions all the time. Uh, we just launched our last village less than a year ago. And I thought it was going to go smooth because we've done it so many times. And we actually face a lot of things that we weren't anticipating, even though we've done it over and over again. So the learning never stops. And the making mistake never stops near. Uh, what could I share from our experience with others? Uh, if something I would love is that people in the development world will recognize that making real impact, it's about long-term commitment. Uh, big money, bilateral money, uh, international uh, money, comes and asks for miracles. They want in three years to recover, to build assets, do all these kind of things, reach out 20, 100, 200,000 people, 50,000 people. Uh, that's putting band-aids. No real economic development at family level can be achieved in three years, unless you start to give away everything. But if it's a path that you want families to earn their way up, live themselves out of poverty, it takes a lot more time and it cannot be as scaled as the mainstream economic development uh, organizations try to do it. I think it takes a long-term commitment. It takes a family by family approach and it takes a process in which health families build their own path, their own community organization, their own community structures in order to be sustainable. But you need to be able to say, hey, am I comfortable with impact over scale? For many organizations, that's not a good trade-off. We're comfortable with that trade-off. It seems like a clever approach. And uh, I can imagine the difference in how the community feel about themselves when you have empowered them to step out of their own poverty rather than being dragged up by someone else. So I can, make, I can imagine what a huge emotional difference it, it, it makes. So let's say someone is listening to this then and they feel yeah this sounds like a great idea i would love to somehow take some steps to help out one of these communities maybe keep updated uh, what can they do well Emil, you know first of all uh subscribe to our go to our website subscribe learn more about what we do uh reach out to our staff our staff is always open and encouraging people to to reach out to them and then take action uh, take action by uh, telling your friends about Agros, tell your friends about the mission, tell your friends uh, about what you think is interesting of the model. And, and then, you know, they can support us financially. They can consider us traveling whenever traveling is, is, uh, is back again and actually meeting these families. Because I just want to let you know something. Our model works because people get engaged and we have a track record of years of families helping families. This is families in different countries who develop a personal connection with these families in these villages. And over the years, you know, they actually get to know them. And somehow we are that trusted intermediary that brings some opportunity and resources to these families. But in exchange, the family who engage get somehow touched transform internally and get a lot more in return. So uh, get to know more about Agros, uh, get in touch with our staff, uh, subscribe and uh, tell your friends about it. Beautiful. Alberto, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. It's been highly interesting to hear about your model to uh, 
help communities move out of poverty. Thank well, you. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for what you do. And hasta luego. <laughs> thank you. And for you listening, if you enjoyed this episode, press subscribe on YouTube or your podcast app, because then the algorithms understand that this is an important conversation so more people can hear what action steps they can do to help others and communities move out of poverty. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. What is great.com? That is the most common question that we get. And the shortest answer I can give you is that we are a company that is moving money from the online casino industry and donates it to charities that is helping the environment. The long answer, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you today. But if you're curious, definitely Google whatisgreat.com to learn more.